Good rising family. This is Big Judah coming to you guys in California. Before I begin, I'm give all praise to the Most High Yahweh. Acknowledgement to the earthly mother. Who is wisdom? Who was the Holy Spirit? Acknowledgement to Yahweh Shai. I pray the Most High blesses this lesson this evening, gives more knowledge and understanding of the events of the past <clears throat> in order to understand events that are currently happening on the earth. So we get a much better understanding of the things that are soon to come on the earth. Brethren, as I uh, was awakened this morning, the Most High put it on my heart to uh, make this video reviewing some prophecy that uh, the Most High showed me, I'm going to say a couple years ago, regarding Joel chapter 2. I know I talked about it in a live a couple days ago, but the... Um, Precepts didn't come through real clear, so I wanted to guys give you the opportunity to see them once again so you can actually go and check them out on your own. Now, we're seeing all this buildup, this military buildup, and we're seeing how all of a sudden the United States is working feverishly to get their military equipment up out of here, out of the Americas. But see, this is what the uh, churches have hidden from the world, that... Oh, they're always saying that America is not in the Bible. America is not in prophecy. Yes, it is. America in the, in the Bible is just referred to as the fourth part. Revelation chapter six, I already did a video on it. I'll try to put it in the, in the description box. Go and check that out. Talking about the pale horse being brought over here and, and bringing death and destruction. That's exactly what the Europeans did when they were released by the Most High to come over here and bring judgment to the Israelites. But see, your stay here has an expiration date. Your stay here, you will be evicted. And that's exactly what you're seeing the beginnings of right now. The eviction notice. And see, this is why these churches don't get into Joel. They don't get, try, you know, and if they do, they're going to try to give their oppressors breakdown of, the, of our Bible. But we're going to give you the true Hebrew understanding. And the way we have to do things is here a little, there a little. And not just be, you know, confined to one book. Because these prophecies are being fulfilled all over the place. We talked about when did, uh, you know, in, in a couple lives ago, we we're asking, like, when did you guys start getting into the truth? When did you start getting into the truth? When were you called? I see a lot of the brothers and sisters talking about, like, there might have been a death in the family. There might have been some huge event in the family. And then that all of a sudden was the spearhead that got you into the truth. Most High has been working to get you next to people that you can grow in this truth together. Most High has done that with me. So that, you know, I didn't, I had a brother to, you know, bounce ideas off of. Brothers, you know, that I can work with and, and go through things together. I'm sure that's the same for all of us. That shows you how the Holy Spirit has been released here in the Americas, like it said it was going to happen. And how many of, many of the people who are awakened right now, that's where we're at. We're here in the Americas. So we look real quick here at the uh, book of you know, the keys of Enoch. And right here, the return of the dove. Now people can say, oh, I don't believe in this book, this, 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 and that. Like every book, you got to chew the meat and spit out the bones. There just might be some information that's just over our heads that we can't understand at this point as well. But when I first got this book, this is what I was pulled to right from jump. The return of the dove, the return of the Holy Spirit. Now, when you think about the fact that we've been awakened all generally close to the same amount of time, same time, and how the Most High has been working, the Holy Spirit's been working in our lives for years to get us to this point, to get us to the point where we depend on the Most High and not on man. We don't need men. We don't need the Gentiles to teach us anything. We don't need to, you know, them to corral us and keep us from studying. But see, many love that. Many want to be told what to do because that's that slave mentality. You know, before we didn't have that. But for the last few hundred years, that's what's been, you know, just ingrained into our heads that we need someone to tell us because we're not mentally capable of doing things on our own. We need to have some outside influence telling us what's good and what's not, what we can read and what we can't read instead of depending on the Holy Spirit. But see, 
Now you understand why these other books are being released, why this information is being released, because those constraints are being taken off. Us ha being you know, dependent upon the other nations to dictate what we do and what we don't do, all that's being taken off. But, you know, there are plenty of people who love Massa so much and they can't let Massa go. You know what I'm saying? They can't let Massa go and, you know, they, they want to be told what to do. They want to be told what they can and can't read. And if that's your lot, then that's your lot. But many of us are ready for the Most High to release us, to be able to do the things we did before. And as you can see, that's exactly what he's doing. He's put it in the brothers and sisters' hearts to chase after what gifts the Most High has given you. If he's given you the gifts of herbs, giving you the gifts, gifts of being able to read the stars, you know, the gifts of being able to build things because we were the master masons, giving you the gifts of being able to, you know, <clears throat> do so many different things. We all have our gifts and the Most High is now getting, is preparing us because we're going to be able to use these gifts for the nation. That's what we're at the precipice of at this moment. The Most High evicting you know, our oppressors off of our lands and us having to chase and follow the Most High and the Holy Spirit in these days to come. As they get evicted, their society is going to collapse. As much as they're trying to make it seem as if things are getting better. Oh, the economy's great. Things are great. We're going to have to raise the interest rates because things are going so great. Oh, man, you know, America's back. And you keep believing that, man. America's never coming back. Because like we said, you have an expiration date. You saw 2019, from 1619 to 2019, everything changed after 2019. Everything changed after March of 2020, our new year. And things have never gone back and they never will. So now let's get into some of this prophecy real quick. We're going to read it real quick. But the, th the key is, the, the uh, you know... Getting the understanding from Joel chapter 2 here, but getting it from the Israelites' point of view. Because you remember, the Most High is the power of the Israelites. We have been oppressed. Most High brought a nation from a far distance over here to destroy us. And when you understand that, then when you see these other prophecies, it makes much more sense. Just go really quick. Let's go to, um, before I read this, Luke 21... Let's see. Let's look at Luke 21 and 20. And when ye shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. Now just think about Revelation 6 when the Most High let these um, other nations come over here, okay? Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains, and let them which are in the midst of it depart out, and let not them that are in the countries enter therein too. For these be the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. And it was written that these other nations were going to come over here and destroy us, and that had to be fulfilled as well. But woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. For there shall be great distress in the land and wrath upon this people and that's when the most high allowed these gentiles to come over here and destroy the israelites 24 and they shall fall by the edge of the sword and they shall be led away captive into all nations and jerusalem shall be trodden down of the gentiles until the times of the gentiles be fulfilled so you guys had your opportunity you took us into slavery you sold us all over the world this was prophecy. These are the prophecies that your pastors and your priests don't teach. You Christians, don't bring this up. Don't talk about this. Y'all think you're going to get um, raptured away. That's not going to happen. There's a bill due. Most High is removing your northern armies off of these lands. And if this isn't the right interpretation, go make a video and prove it wrong. Twenty-five, And there shall be signs in the sun, and in the moon, and in the stars, and upon the earth, 
distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. And see, the Most High is letting us know that we were the ones who were reading the stars. We were the ones who were able to read the stars and figure out prophecy. They didn't want us to be able to figure these kinds of things out. So therefore, that's why they made it taboo to even look into these types of things. But that's okay, because we're not under that, the, that leadership anymore. We are under the leadership of our Father. And he's letting us know what really is ours, what our heritage really is, and not letting the Gentiles dictate that anymore. Before I read this again, let's also go to uh, let's go to Baruch. See, these books hidden because they don't want you to realize that they've been fulfilling prophecy. Baruch chapter 4. Um, let's see, here's our 14. Baruch 4 and 14. Let them that dwell in Z about Zion come and remember ye the captivity of my sons and daughters which the everlasting hath brought upon them. Okay? The Most High brought this destruction, brought this slavery upon us. 15. For he hath brought a nation upon them from far, a shameless nation, and of a strange language, who neither reverence old man nor pity child. There you go. There's coming over here with your Spanish, coming over here with your English, coming over here with your French, coming over here with your Dutch, coming here with all your languages. You are this nation that was brought from afar. You are the shameless nation of a strange language. Okay? 16. These have carried away the dear beloved children of the widow and left her that was alone, desolate, without daughters. Okay? If you want to read more, go ahead and read Baruch chapter 4. Like I said, this is for all the ones that, you know, that want to know the truth. Want to know the truth of what's really going on right now. Take a look here again at Baruch chapter 2. Verse 30, because this is what's happening right now at the end of the times of the Gentiles. For I knew that they would not hear me, because it is a stiff-necked people. Yes, we were stiff-necked and we weren't listening to the Most High. But what's going to happen at the end of the times of the Gentiles? But in the land of their captivities, they shall remember themselves. In the land of their captivities, they shall remember themselves. And shall know that I am the Lord, their God. For I will give them a heart and ears to hear. The Most High is letting us know that we are to follow him. We are not to follow man. We are not to let man dictate what we read. We are not to let man dictate what we study. We are to follow the Most High. And he's calling all of his children to do that. 31. And shall know that I am the Lord their God. For I will give them a heart and ears to hear. And they shall praise me in the land of their captivity. And think upon my name, and that's exactly what we're doing, and return from their stiff neck and from their wicked deeds. For they shall remember the way of their fathers, which sinned before the Lord. We we're going to remember the ways of our fathers, not remember the ways that the Gentiles dictate to us. 34. And I will bring them again into the land which I promised, with an oath unto their fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And they shall be lords of it, and I will increase them and they shall not be diminished. And I will make an everlasting covenant with them to be their God, and they shall be my people. And I will no more drive my people of Israel out of the land that I have given them. And he used you Gentiles to drive us out of the land, to enslave us, to send us all over the world in chains, as well as being enslaved here on our own lands and working for you in your encomienda systems, where they gave land you know, grants to these people, and then also the people on the lands became your slaves. Let's go to Romans 2. Actually, I want to go to Isaiah 14. Isaiah chapter 14. This is what you're seeing happening right now. Most I turned his face away from us and allowed your Gentiles to come over here and fulfill Revelation chapter 6. 
But right now, the Most High has turned his face back to us. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel and set them in their own land. And the stranger shall be joined with them and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. And the people shall take them and bring them to their place. And the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord, her servants and handmaids. And they shall take them captives, whose captives they were. And they shall rule over their oppressors. And it shall come to pass in the day that the Lord shall give thee rest from thy sorrow and from thy fear and from the hard bondage wherein thou wast made to serve, that thou shalt take up his proverb against the king of Babylon and say, how hath the oppressor ceased, the golden city ceased. You see, it's ceasing. The times of the Gentiles is ceasing. And now you're seeing them moving, all, trying to move all these things out of here. They're trying to move all this equipment all of a sudden. You know, they might definitely be trying to uh, make it seem like it's because you know, it's, it's of war. It's because of war. But it's like, you know, they keep on giving them all these opportunities to... Uh, they negotiate, negotiate, negotiate. Okay. Hold on fast. Taking a look for something real quick. Let's go ahead and take a look really fast right here. Joel chapter two. Now we have that backdrop and you understand that you guys, America is a prophecy. You coming over here and destroying us was part of prophecy, but you have an expiration date, Genesis 15, 13, 400 years, 16, 19, 2019. The switch has been going on. Let me take a look here. Uh, blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast. Call a solemn assembly, gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children and those that suck the breast. Let the bridegroom go forth of his chamber and the bride out of her closet. Let the priests, the ministers of the Lord weep between the porch and the altar and let them say, spare thy people, O Lord, and give not thy heritage to reproach that the heathen should rule over them. Wherefore? Should thou say, or should they say among the people, where is their God? You're not going to have that opportunity anymore. You're not going to be asking, oh, where's their God? We're doing all these things to your people and you do nothing for them. Now the Most High is moving. And that's exactly what you're seeing going on right now. Then will the Lord be jealous for his land and pity his people. That's what you're seeing right now. Most High wants his land back. You've had it long enough. He wants his people back. You've had it long enough. Eviction notice has been served. And you've got the message loud and clear. You can't let people know that you've been telling them the wrong prophecies. You can't let them know that you've been destroying the Most High's chosen people. And you've been defiling his land. So therefore, you've got to make some kind of a pretext to be able to start to move all of your military equipment and your people up out of here. So all of a sudden, Russia is just rushing all of their you know, military equipment to, their, to the border. And now you guys got to rush to get all this military equipment up out of here. Like we said, Satan's real slick. He, all the way till the end, he's still not going to let you know about the Israelites and the blessings and the curses of the Israelites because the curses are falling upon you and they don't want you to realize that. 20, but I will remove far off from, the, uh, from you the northern army. Actually, I'm sorry. I skipped up. I went too far. 18. I'm going to read that one again. Then will the Lord be jealous for his land and pity his people. Yea, the Lord will answer and say unto his people, Behold, I will send you corn and wine and oil, and ye shall be satisfied therewith. And I will no more make you a reproach among the heathen. Most High is going to raise up his people. He's going to be actually, you know, helping us to go back to the way things were before. He's going to have us remember how things were before. Remember who we were. Remember, we don't depend on the Gentiles. 
They depend on us. But like I said, there are many that still can't let that whole slave mentality go. And still want to be told what to do by men and not the Most High. 20. But I will remove far off from you the northern army and will drive him into a land barren and desolate with his face toward the east sea and his hinder part toward the utmost sea and his stink shall come up and his ill savor shall come up because he has done great things. He has done great things against the Most High and his people. Fear not, O land, be glad and rejoice for the Lord will do great things. Be not afraid, ye beasts of the field, for the pastures of the wilderness do spring, for the tree um, beareth her fruit, and fig tree and the vine do yield her strength. Be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he hath given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause uh, to come down uh, for you the rain, the former rain, and the latter rain in the first month. And the floors shall be full of wheat, and the fats shall overflow with wine and oil. And I will restore to you the years the lo that the locust hath eaten, the canker worm, and the caterpillar, and the palmer worm, my great army, okay, which I sent among you. Our angels are going to be like Brother Greg Howood was talking about, um, about the angels encompassing our area and protecting us, letting us, you know, enjoy the years, enjoy the time that was taken away from us. Now, let me see here. I want to show you. Uh, if you look at 20 and you look at K, the letter K right there in 20 says uh, Deuteronomy 22, 39. But what I want to do right now is go to chapter one, verse four of Joel, because that's what the other um, was referencing right there. The other precept is re referencing chapter one, um, Joel chapter one, verse four. So we'll go here real fast. Here's Joel chapter one, verse four. Okay. That which the palmer worm hath left, hath the locust eaten. And that which the locust hath uh, left, hath the canker worm eaten and that which the canker worm hath left hath the caterpillar eaten all these different countries coming in and just feeding off of our of us as a people all these different dispensations of time these different groups of people these different countries coming in and stealing our resources and stealing our people that's what they've been doing we take a look at the next one five awake ye drunkards and weep and howl that's going with F, uh, Luke 21, 34. I'll read that in a minute. I want you guys to finish with five. Okay, all ye drinkers of wine, because of the new wine, for it is cut off from your mouth. So let's take a look at Luke 21, 34 real quick. Luke 21 and 34. And take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with suffer, uh, surfing and drunkenness and cares of this life. And so that that day come upon you unawares. See, many people are worried about, oh, the economy is doing well. Things are going to go back to normal. Look at the football game this weekend. Oh, we got the Super Bowl. Oh, look at the NBA. We got the NBA, tra you know, dra what is it? The NBA trade line deadline coming. You're worrying about everything else, but you're not seeing all the prophecies being fulfilled right now. The Most High is showing you that he's raising up his people. He, they're giving you the true breakdown of Bible prophecy. But you're too busy, you know, looking at everything else to, to, under, to see what's going on. Prophecy is being fulfilled right in front of your face. The Most High has awakened his people. He's turned his face back to his people. He's having them remove the northern army off of our lands. And you still think it's because of, you know, Russia and what they're doing over there on their borders. The Most High's will is being fulfilled right now let's take a look at that um deuteronomy 28 38 real quick deuteronomy 28 and 38 thou shalt carry much seed out into the field and shall gather but little in for the locust shall consume it 
We were the ones going out into slavery, working these fields and got it and getting nothing for it. Let's go to 40 and 41. Thou shalt have olive trees throughout all thy coasts, but thou shalt not anoint thyself with the oil for um, thine olive shall cast its, uh, shall cast his fruit. Thou shalt beget sons and daughters, but thou shalt not enjoy them, for they shall go into captivity. All thy trees and fruit of thy land shall the locusts consume. That's you other nations. You've been coming in and consuming all of our resources. You've been enslaving our people. And the Most High said, no more. That time is over with. That is why we are being awakened now. That is why we're being raised up to bring this truth. Because your churches, your pastors, and your priests will not do so. They have made covenants with the priests of Mahan, with the abominable church, to never tell us the truth. That's why the Most High has to raise up his own people to tell the world the truth, to be the light that we have been uh, set up to be. And that's exactly what we're doing right now. And if what we're saying is not true, prove it. For a nation is come up upon my land, strong and without number, whose teeth are the teeth of a lion, and he hath the cheek teeth of a great lion. He hath laid my vine waste and barked my fig tree. He hath made it clean, bare, and cast it away. The branches thereof are made white. Now remember, I talked about the vine and the tree working together. I didn't even think, I didn't make that connection until right now. I will try to make that, I'll put, I'll try to find that video and put it in the description box as well. How the tree and the vine were supposed to work together, the Gentiles and the Jew, the Israelites supposed to work together. This is the prophecy that you're seeing. The Most High coming, turn his face back to his people. Take a look. You guys can check out the precepts on your I know I, a couple days ago I did the live and tried to go over this, but you couldn't really see the um, the precepts too well. So that's why I went ahead and do this. Most I made me do this one this morning. And ye shall eat in plenty. This is Joel chapter 2 again. Okay, verse 26. And be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God that has dealt wondrously with you and my people shall never be ashamed. That's what you're seeing going on right now. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel and that I am the Lord, your God, and none else. And my people shall never be ashamed. You'll never get a chance to do what you did to us before. You're never going to have that opportunity once again. We are never going to be under your thumb again. So those glory days that you're praying for and you're hoping for, those damn sure are not coming back. So it's time to embrace this truth. And embrace the most highest chosen people if you're called to. Because that's your only hope for any type of mercy at this point. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Young, uh, your young men shall see visions. And also upon the servants and upon the handmaids. In those days will I pour out my, my uh, spirit. Those are the ones that are going to be cleaving. The other nations are going to see a lot of this information. They're still not going to understand it, but that's our job to make sure we clarify it for you. And I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Most High shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem, shall be deliverance. And as the Lord has said, and in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. Holy Spirit has been released on our lands. Holy Spirit is waking up our people. Cleave to the most highest chosen people if that's what you are called to do. Because this truth is not going, is, it's undefeated and there's nothing you're going to be able to do against it. All praise is to the Most High, Yahweh. Acknowledgement to the earthly mother. Who is wisdom? Who is the Holy Spirit? Acknowledgement to Yahweh Shai. Shalom.